Hello, I'm Neil. I'm Sharon. And we are Pajama Club. And you're watching Noise Eleven. Welcome to Noise Eleven, and with me, uh, Neil Finn, Sharon Finn, and uh, something brand new, Pajama Club. Yeah. And this is uh, sort of something that pretty much did begin in the pajamas, didn't it? Well, it did, yeah. Um, and uh, we were at home at night with some time on our hands and decided we'd have a crack at playing some drums and bass together because we'd never done it before. And apart from a sort of joyful abandon and great time doing it, when we listened back to the uh, the music that I always record, um, it had something something about it that mm. was kind of charming and groovy and, uh, you know, as simple as you like. But it seemed to lend itself to maybe fleshing out and making songs of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Sharon, have you actually been musical before? Oh, on the odd occasion. Yeah. I've done a few backing vocals on Neil's projects and... And um, played a bass on Seven Worlds, a track on Seven Worlds, mm -hmm. the last one. Seven Worlds Collide. Yeah. She also won a heavy metal um, solo competition at a party we had in <laughs> East St Kilda once. Yeah, it was the outfit. It was years ago. <laughs> a one note solo, which is a, always a joy to behold, isn't it? Yeah. You know, Neil Young, one note, that's enough. Sharon knew that too. Yeah. yeah. She has an inherent understanding of some of the basic <laughs> rules of rock and roll. So when did this go from being the, uh, you know, just the fun at home to, hey, this is, a, this is something we should release as, a, as an album. And, and, and did you have to have your arm twisted for that, Sharon? Oh, no, not the recording, because I love that. Mm. I love the whole process. No, no, I didn't have to twist my arm. It was just such good fun. And once we played it to um, Sean and he went away and did his little thing on it, he loved it. Yeah. We sort of convinced that it was probably a good way to go. Yeah. When did you realise, though, uh, Neil, that you know, this was actually something that you could actually tour and, and release? It grew in stages as we developed the little jams that we had. I mean, the sound of the bass and drums on the record is, in fact, still the sound of us jamming, and we just chopped them up and uh, made them, organised them a little bit, and then wrote songs on top of them. So um, I think we knew straight away that the rhythm tracks, even before they were songs, were kind of had something about them, but I stuck a few chords on them, and things started to emerge that were different from what I normally would do. I thought, oh, well, this is worth pursuing this because new angles you know to be um you got to be very grateful for that after a long period of making music mm. get away from your normal habits and something that sharon and i could do together an interest we could have together mm. you know we could have jumped in a camper van and gone around australia and but uh no no we're, we're um <laughs> doing interviews in south melbourne and uh, and probably jumping in camper vans and going around doing interviews in a little over like, australia it's not a camper van exactly but yeah. a split of van yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, the, the, the boys left home, didn't they? So you became they you know, empty nesters for the first time. Yeah, although they come back from periodically to graze and to... Oh, um, get used to that. Yeah. 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 And, uh, but that's but, good. Yeah, we don't mind it. Best of both worlds, then, isn't it? <laughs> They're good mm. guys, really, and we love them. Mm. Mm. Well, you've worked a lot with, uh, with Liam in particular over the years, haven't you? He's been in a few of the bands. Uh, yeah, well, he's toured with Crowded House, and he's, I've, you know, we've done various things and he's played. Yeah, in fact, he toured when he was 14 with one of my solo albums. And, um, you know, I've had the chance to play with Elroy a few times. Yeah, it's great. We have this the genetic um, swing, the same swing in the way we play our, our fields. So, and you can't argue with that. Um, you can't create that either. Sharon somehow, even though she's not genetically linked, hmm. carries the same gene because yeah. her bass playing is intrinsically linked with the way that, you know, I feel things as well. So, Yeah. yeah. Are we going to see a, an Elroy record somewhere down the track? Yeah, I reckon you probably will. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you could see other things from Elroy as well. He's a, a multifaceted guy, but mm. at the moment he's playing drums for Liam. All right. So this uh, drum and bass beginning, you know, the essence of that sort of reminds me of where, uh, I guess, Tina Weymouth and Chris France were with, uh, with Tom Tom Club. Do, did you sort of get a feel for maybe the sort of stuff that they've been putting together over the last 20 years when, you know, you just had the, the drum and bass there to start and, you know, having the relationship with the husband and wife team there as well? Um, I didn't actually think of them at the time. Sort of afterwards we did. Yeah. A bit. And we took heart from there because we, I really liked them. I think that was a great record mm. in there. And, and they've made some great stuff. And, and there's something very endearing about, um, about them as a couple as well. And certainly their work in Talking Heads, all of those things. But uh, there's also, you know, there's been various people that have inspired us. ESG, the Scroggin Sisters. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we went to see the Pixies recently, and Kim Deal's pretty amazing on the bass guitar. So I think mm. Sharon, you took a shine to her. I think she's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What about the McCartney albums, the McCartney and McCartney Two? Because I know you're a very big Beatle fan, and you know, there's often 
write-ups where people talk about you and Paul McCartney in the same breath. Um, was that something, again, the McCartney albums that were drawn as influence as the homemade album? Not directly that I was thinking about it. Um, there's kindred spirit in the sense of doing things at home on your own, um, but not really, no. I mean, I don't normally go into anything um, with a, a direct idea of, of trying to emulate um, or uh, resemble anything. I mean, these things occur afterwards when people mention them. Um, and you go, oh, yeah, well, there might be a little bit of something lurking in there. And it's better when they're, they're shadowy influences and you don't acknowledge them too much when you're actually making the work, I think. Mm. In Diamonds in Her Eyes, I'm reminded of uh, Wings Wildlife, one of the early McCartneys. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I don't, I'm not even sure I know the, the song that well, but I probably, mm. I'm sure I know it. I haven't mm. listened to those albums for a long time. So, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of the Beatles and McCartney's work, and, and but, uh, but amongst a whole lot of other things. And, you know, I don't really listen to much other music. I just, when we're doing our own stuff, I just listen to that. Mm. <laughs> it's really single-minded and kind of a bit narrow, really. I mean, I'm hearing so many new sounds on this record that, you know, I haven't heard on a, a split ends of Crowded House and Neil Finn record before. Uh, in particular, can't put it uh, down until it ends. Mm. You know, that great solo, the uh, organ solo that goes through that uh, record. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't mean TNT for two, do you, with the organ that's got the organ solo? Uh, well, it, There it, is organ in, yes. in Can't Put It Down. Yes, so might, yeah. Um, but it's not a solo. Not a solo as, as, as per se, right? but it's <laughs> yeah. quite predominant. No, fair enough. I'm being pedantic. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's different sounds in there than what I would normally do. And that was partially because working on top of drums and bass was a different environment and seemed to suggest some new angles. And we wanted to keep it fairly loose and raw. And But Sean Donnelly, our um, collaborator, uh, was very, um, ver- you know, very keen to skew it, its perspective a little bit. Mm. And... Um, you know, add some oddness as much as we could, really. So, yeah, there was an opportunity to explore some new things, for sure. Yeah. Well, I guess TNT for two, as you mentioned there, is probably the most Neil Finn-sounding song some on the project. Some people pajama. say. Do you, do you agree with that? I can hear what they what they mean in the sense that the way my, the melody is presented is kind of more typical of me. And my voice is in full range, which I would normally use on, on Crowded House. Yeah. So yes, and the short answer is. Mm. What about go kart? If we're going to be talking about voices, because you kicked that one off, mm. and uh, I don't, I can't believe he's been hiding you from the microphone for all these years. Oh, he hasn't really been hiding me, have you? I've been trying, you know, you know, trying to keep her in the shadows, but yeah. it's just I can't do it anymore. How'd you decide who was going to sing which part? I think probably lyrically and everything, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and just try it out. You know, we tried melodies out with me singing, with Sharon singing, sometimes together, often together, in fact. Often, yeah. That's a good blend. You know, when we sing the same melody in unison, I think that's really one of the signature sounds on the record, and I really love the sound of that. Um, and that worked quite a lot. We did that a lot. Mm. Mm. Yeah. How many of these songs can you perform live, and do you perform live? All of them. Yeah? Mm. Not tomorrow night. Well, not at the principal, because we're actually, unfortunately, without um, our... Sean. Sean. At He's this, very sick. Oh. He hasn't been very well. Um, Get well, Sean. Mm. Yeah, and... Um, uh, so we've we've had a very cramming week with our new keyboard player Matthias, and we didn't have really the ability to learn everything off the record. But on the last tour we did with Sean, last time we were in Melbourne, in fact, we played every song on the record. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And do you mix it up with some of your older songs? Only one, only "Suffer Never" from the Finn Brothers, which is also now mashed up with um, with a Gary Newman classic, which was just an accidental discovery at rehearsal, and another cover um, as well. But no, just. We haven't. We've, the remarkable thing is that people aren't yelling out for old songs. Um, so there's something in people's um, appreciation of of it uh, that is up for new stuff, you know, and open to new stuff. So you've got to be thankful for that. I guess as a songwriter, you're starting at a completely different point for these records. You know, you know, you don't have to create a split ends record, a crowded house record, a Neil Finn record, a Finn Brothers record with this. Did that was that no. sort of like a, a weight off the shoulder then when you recorded? Well it's really nice to be in a new environment, you know, mm. and I'm a bit restless in that regard. Um, I like to be uh, mixing it up and working with different people and in different entities and different ways of working. So the only downside of that is it's a little confusing for the general public, possibly. You know, it's maybe easier if you stick to one name and um, try and keep that con- continuity, but it's just the what ke- keeps it fresh for me. Yeah. So I-, I like it that way. Yeah. Another track that uh, stands out to me, These Are Conditions. Mm. Yeah. The funky song. one. Yeah. Yeah. It has got a really funky groove, courtesy of Sharon's bass line, really, on that one. 
it's got a um, a strange little slide in it that I wouldn't expect any other any professional bass player to do. Mm. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's just a set, there's a certain uh, a real charm and and and, the, and Sharon is as funky as hell. You know, she's dances really well, and I think that's why she plays bass really well. Keeps it to a minimum, you know. Doesn't and there's nothing florid or um, too ornamental about the way Sharon plays bass. Mm. Just gets down to business. How long have you been playing bass? Oh, now probably a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Practicing. I just picked it up and off you went. Yeah, well, you know, I've always picked it up, but, you know, not really seriously taken it on, you know. Mm. Still didn't know the notes or anything when I started this project, had to learn all that. Yeah, but you were quite, quite the artist uh, creatively, weren't you? Mm, you know? yeah. Like I know uh, when uh, when Jane and Jimmy had their house shown on TV about a year ago, they you know pointed oh, out right. some of your work right. in oh, the in the lounge room there. Oh, good on them! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good promotion. So, do you do a lot of that? Yeah, I've got a showroom in Auckland yeah, mm-hmm. and a workroom. Yeah, yeah, but I haven't been doing much of that lately. I haven't had much time, but. Um yeah. So that's the day job. That's the day job. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday job at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. While uh, while you're touring the world. Oh, well, no, well, Sharon's often come with me, and the family did as well, for that matter. We uh, decided early on that we would try and be together as, you know, often as possible. It isn't, um, I think it's a great thing to have not to be a big boys club travelling around the world. Mm-hmm. And maybe when you're, if you're 20 years old, it's kind of a good way to be, but it's sort of a bit unhealthy when bands are travelling without their families at the age of 45, I reckon. <laughs> not to be judgmental. Mm-hmm. Have you considered <laughs> your own record now? God no, no, I don't think so. It's I haven't, wasn't expecting this one, so you know, I'm not even thinking about that. <laughs> I think you should get the iPad and start working. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, it's tempting actually. Yeah. 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 What about another uh, pajama album? There's various, you know, things on the on the go. There's little jams that we had in London recently that would make a pretty stirring start to a new album, and they push it even further. I think. So you never know, you know. I mean, amongst other things, there's there's a lot on. There's a lot of albums converging at the moment in the old um, pipes. Mm. Yeah, that's not a particular. That's a, oh, that's an okay analogy to use. Pipes isn't it? in the pipes. <laughs> in the pipe line. Pipe line. <laughs> yeah. The eleven tracks on on this are they the eleven? Are there more? There wasn't any more that we finished. No, there was a few other jams that we didn't get around to finishing, but. Um, no, we put them all on. They all in their place, and I would have probably gone for ten, but I we couldn't. Um, it's like you know leaving a child behind. Mm. It's not quite, <laughs> but you can't. You work on them, you love them. Yeah. You know we they don't decide. answer back. Yeah. So how long will will this project go on until you know you're back doing something else? As long as people are interested in in it and they want us to come and play, we'll turn up. And uh, but we're pretty. You know, um, fatalistic, realistic. We don't have the expectations of a career, um, so we can't be too disappointed because we wanted to keep it fun, and uh, it has been so far. Uh, but we you know we've already got a few things penciled in for early next year, and we intend to go and stand up for our record. We're going to England um, at the end of this week to go and do some TV over there. So. You know, we'll put the miles in. We'll put mm. the yards in, the hard yards. Sharon's not all that. She thinks it should have just stopped at the the <laughs> point where we made the record, and that'll be that'll be it. Mm. But you know, no, no, no. There's, there's there's media to be done. There's touring to be done, yeah. Sharon. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're a brick player, you've yeah. got to do a few barrel loads. <laughs> That's a very good line. So, what will be for Neil Finn after this? Will, will there be another split ends? Will there be another crowded house? You know, what will you do I don't next? think it'll be another split ends record. I think that would be extremely remote at this point. But um It could be a tour though. Uh, crowded even that's getting quite tricky at the moment. Mm. But um for one reason or another. <laughs> I'm not letting on <laughs> anymore. Um but uh Crowded House is there's another re- sort of record in the works there. Um I'm not sure if it'll be the next thing, but it mm. could be. It it's likely. And then there's a solo record looming. Um, you know, there's a a number of other things that could happen. Yeah? Yeah, but I want to keep pumping them out. You know, it's, time is of the essence. Another Finn Brothers record? Quite possibly at some yeah. point. Yeah, not probably not next, but we'd be keen to do that. Yeah, there's a lot of will to do a bunch of records. Maybe if I stopped touring so much, I could make a record <laughs> here. <laughs> oh, well, I tell you what, it's uh, it's interesting to have this out at the moment, Pajama Club. It's a very, very different sounding Neil Finn with Sharon Finn and, uh, you know, the rest of the band in there touring around the world. All right. All right. Check it out.
Nice one. Neil, Sharon, thanks for joining us here. Thank you.